Hey. Um, um, thank you. Uh, question. Do you have any plans for uh, getting Paul McGillian into the castle? You know, we have uh, we have talked with Paul. I was just talking to Paul a little while ago about this, actually. Um, there are so many great actors that we would love to bring over. And I think really it's it's not about, um, it's just about finding the right character. I mean, for Will, Dr. Parrish, it was just the right character for him. And um, I think that if we end up telling a story that has uh, a character that Paul feels right for, um, I would love to have him on the show with so many others that we've talked about um, in, in the past. Sure. I have just oh, received yes. um, a signal. Do we have a signal? Indicating that, that DVDs can happen. Oh, this is so very, very exciting. Um, <laughs> you guys want to see them for you? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we should go down there so you can see. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. We're going to go down there. <laughs> Roll that. Oh yeah, that's good.
Was that a hard sell for you to the network to say, we're going to do this, it's going to change fundamentally, and no, we're never going to go back? Was that difficult? Uh, yeah, it was. It was really hard, actually. Um, what did it, you have to do to get a yes? Lots of sexual favors. I'm not proud. I'm not feeling dirty. But I totally did it, so. Yes, you did. He was really, he was a gamer. Um, no, it's really funny. I think that, that uh, Bruce uh, Miller, who I, I mentioned my co-showrunner and I, went in to pitch, as we have to do every season, um, uh, sort of what what's our big thing going to be for the season. And we, in the off-season, before we had actually been picked up for season four, um, and uh, I didn't even know if Bruce was coming back. I, like, almost none of my writers were coming back, so I was going to be restaffing the whole thing. They, they, they had a meeting with the network and the studio, and it was that, that conversation about, you know, it's season four, and it has to be really good. It's, it's, you have to go big, because you this is the season that decides whether you get seasons five and beyond. I mean, this is no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to be good. And um, we, there is, you know, this concept, uh, Founders Day was one of the, um, the original concepts um, from season one that I've always wanted to do. And I had had a version of it that, at that point, was really going to be, um, all, it was based around Carter was was uh, still pursuing Allison. Stark was still in the picture, and uh, Allison invited him over, uh, Carter over, and he's so going over thinking that it's for dinner with her, and actually it's the babies of Kevin while she goes out with Stark, and he's all on that, and he gets um, sort of stuck there with Kevin, who goes and creates something that shunts the two of them back to 1947. And that was the original idea that they would be there, and Carter was going to have to try and figure out how to get them back without undoing the town. And you know, in season one, it felt like it was too soon to do that because you hadn't really gotten to know the characters. And in season two, it was a budgetary issue because it's very expensive, obviously, to do a period piece. Um, you know, you're not using sets that you own and costumes that you own, and you have props and all those things, hair and makeup. They're all extra expenses. So, um, you know, flash forward to season four, and uh, we were going to actually do 22 episodes. One of them was going to be a two-hour. And um, Bruce, and Bruce said, "Hey, listen, why don't we? If we're going to do a two-hour, maybe we should do this 1947 thing because we could do it, and uh, we could amortize the cost out over two episodes. We might be able to get the extra money um, from the network." And we started to kick it around, and then they ended up deciding that they couldn't um, justify an extra two-hour movie thing for whatever reason. So they, we kind of got excited about the idea, just Bruce and I kind of kicking around in the off-season when we knew we were coming back. Um, network's like the worst date ever. Because the network's like, we're going to do this crazy, amazing thing later. And you're like, yeah! And then, you, then the network's like, actually, turns out, I have, I kind of really got a headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm tired. Can we just cuddle? <laughs> and so the network always leaves the socks on. <laughs> just is such a bummer. Um, so basically, you know, to, to, to uh, summarize, we ended up deciding, well, maybe we could do it as a season premiere. And then in the course of, of kicking it around with our staff, after we actually brought our writers back, we had we grabbed our new writing staff in, and we sort of told them what we were thinking, um, somebody made the joke that, wow, well, you know, we'll, we'll go back to 1947, that'll be really fun, they'll get back, and hey, wouldn't it be funny if we changed some things? We knew we were going to bring Trevor Graham back, and that that was going to screw things up. But someone said, like, oh, what if it's not the Archimedes statue anymore? What if it's actually a statue of Trevor Grant? Carter gets mocked by that statue every day outside of his office. And then it was just like, I just got hit in the head with a giant hammer and said, we could change everything. <laughs> not just the statue. And then we just all started talking about the things that, you know, where we were going to grow the characters organically, which you can do on any show, but in Eureka, how much, much more fun is it for Henry to all of a sudden walk in and he's married to someone that he just met that morning, and for Joe to all, all of a sudden have the job at Global Dynamics uh, as head of security, and for Fargo to actually be the director, which is a job he's always wanted and never thought he would And totally do. doesn't deserve. Doesn't deserve <laughs> at all, not even a little bit. <laughs> and then to have a new character come in who will point that out at every chance he has. Listen, someone just has to sometimes say the sun is out. <laughs> so when we went in to tell this big idea to the network, 
It, I've never seen Mark Sturm, who's the head of the network out of the West Coast. I've never seen him so excited about anything that we have pitched in all the seasons that we have done before. He literally did the happy dance in his chair. I'm like, <laughs> Sweet little girl. Yes, Mark, you did. I know you did. And but then he said, so so uh, so when are you gonna when are you gonna change it back? And we said, um, we're not. And then it was like, oh. <laughs> See now you're messing with your franchise. And we said, yes, exactly. We're gonna mess with our franchise. And we really believed that the audience would come along for the ride. We thought, you know. It's, it is here because we wanted this to be something that is constantly changing and that you know, we care enough about the characters and hopefully you appreciate the town that we shifted it enough that you can still feel like it's your show but there's all this sort of endless new possibility. So um, I'm really glad you guys liked it because we really put our necks out for it. So. And knowing what comes through the rest of season four and what happens in season five, you know, in science fiction it's really easy to just sort of like be hand wavy and make changes and stuff, and uh, it's I mean you, know, you can do it because like you just have to get someplace. But to me as an audience member, it's so insulting when uh, I'm invested in something like Lost, and, uh, <laughs> and just you know, and just suddenly like all this stuff that you loved and cared about and were invested in, ha ha jokes on you. We, we you know we, we dumped all of that. And what I, I, one of the things I really loved as I got to watch, you know, from within the cast, and then also uh, as you know, watching it on television in the in the first half of this last season, is how these relationships change in a way that is completely truthful to the characters and is completely truthful to the world, and is really, I believe, very respectful to uh, to the show that the audience already cares about. So there's like, there's messing with your franchise just to mess with your franchise, um, which some people want to do, which I think is self-destructive and pointless. And then there's messing with your franchise to sort of make, make your show better. And uh, I've told anyone who will listen to me that I think this is the most intelligent reset of a TV show ever. And, and, uh, and, and, is, and, it, and it, makes, it makes so much sense. And stuff is still playing. We're in season five now. Stuff is still, you know, ripples are still coming through, like, you know, uh, Lake Art Comedians. <laughs> uh, no. We would never do that to you. Um, no, I, it, it was, um, that's very nice of you to say, well, I, I think that we really, uh, we just got so excited. I, mean, I think we just trusted that that feeling that if if we who had been writing this show, you know, for me now it's seven years actually um, since we sold the show. I think we're going into our eighth year because uh, they really split two of the seasons up. Um, you know, you live with the characters and you, you you are always constantly in fear of falling into a formula um, because the the question that we always ask ourselves in the writers' room is we're breaking the story is why do we care why. Do we Whose story is this? What character is going through what? Why as an audience do I care about watching this episode? And as a writer, why do I care about writing it? And we got so, I think, just reinvigorated and inspired. And so did our cast members and our crew who have been delivering. You know, you have to understand, like, in television, you know, you only have a certain amount of days and budget. There's just, it's always time and money, really, about what you can deliver. And what our crew does on seven days and a limited budget compared to what most network shows could do in eight, ten days with much more money is amazing. And they just deliver the most amazing work and, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to do the, the, the kinds of stories that we do without those guys. So. Yes? Hello. I, at first, I didn't even recognize you. When you first came on the show, I did not recognize you at all. <laughs> I used to be taller. <laughs> Or actress that you would like to work with, or you wish you had been able to work with, and why? I'm pretty sure she's talking to you. I was thinking it was Brandy too. I was just going to see if you were going to jump in there, and then I was going to go, ha! Um, no, yes, go ahead. Um, I, I've been really lucky to work with really great actors, and I've been really lucky to work with really great actors just before they are sort of discovered. And and uh, you know and then take off. I you know I was 
I was in acting school with Sama Hayek for four years, and we were seeing brothers. Oh, God, picture that for a minute. Just a little bit. the time you need. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's very good. And, and, it's, and it's been it's been really uh, you know I've I've been doing this for thirty years and it's it's really great that I've gotten to meet and work with a lot of wonderful people. Um, He's sixty three, by the way. Did you guys know? That? It's amazing. I know. Turns out, absolutely no downside to making a deal with the devil. <laughs> um, you know, it's a really tough question. There are. There are actors from other eras that I, I would love to have worked with William Holden. Uh, I would love to have worked with Marlon Brando or Al Pacino in the 70s. Um, but uh, I'm really grateful for what I have right now. And I'm really grateful that I get to work. You know, I, I reoccur on a lot of shows right now. And I get to work with great casts in every single one of them. And it's really rare. Um, I'm, I'm, I am unbelievably lucky to work on three shows, and on each show, the cast and crew all love each other. And we're making shows that we're incredibly proud of. Thank you very much. Okay. I thought he was going to say Polly Shore. <laughs> also Polly Shore.